Mateus's version of You'll Be In My Heart sounds like this. <laughs> So a couple things right off the bat, when Mateus recorded his version, he tuned a half step down. Uh, just so, for ease of learning, I'm just going to do this in standard tuning, so that way you don't have to tune a half step down to learn it. Click the link in the description, that'll take you to my website where you can download a chord sheet and tab. Additionally, if you feel like you're having a hard time learning these arrangements, or you have any questions about guitar related theory, um, I offer online lessons, so you can find information about that on my website as well. I've broken this arrangement down into sections. So with each section, I'm gonna play it up to speed right up front, and then I'm gonna talk about what's going on, and then at the end of the section, I'll play it nice and slow. Each section will be time-coded in the description, so hopefully that makes it a little easier to navigate the tutorial. So without further ado, let's get started on section one. So we're going to start off, I think, like a cowboy G chord, but we're only going to grab the uh, third fret of the low E string and third fret of the B string. Um, I'll try to guide you a little bit with the picking hand, but I'm not going to focus on it too much. I'm mostly just going to focus on the fretting hand. So we've got thumb on the low E string, index on the D, middle on the G, ring on the B. We're kind of just playing it like we're, you know, strumming it, and then the pattern goes like this. So on that last cycle of the E and the D string, when we're picking it, um, I'm going to switch, switch out my middle finger for my thumb. And then we have... So that is index finger on the second fret of the G, middle on the second fret of the B. And then, um, so two plucks. Third pluck, we're gonna hammer on our ring finger onto the fourth fret of the G string. Uh, fourth pluck, I believe, we're gonna pull back off. Fifth pluck, we're only gonna hit the D string with our pinky, so. And then we're gonna move on to middle finger on the D string, um, third fret, and then it pulls off to the second fret. And then that pulls off to open. So just a quick note about that shape. When Mateus plays it, he goes to an open string. So he goes. The pinky that I told you to grab is the same note. But if you want to take, you know, some of the things that he's doing in this arrangement and apply it to other arrangements, um, it's cool to utilize the open strings, but I also think it's a good idea to get in the habit of using that pinky on the D string, um, just so that way if you want to move it, like say you wanted to do that on A. You can grab the pinky, but if you go for that open string, it's not going to sound good. Um, so I, I think it's a good idea to get in the habit of, you know, putting that pinky down rather than going for the open string. Moving on, so uh, we just came out of that flourish. Now we're moving on to a C chord. Um, so 
would be like a C sus2. I'm calling it a sus2, not an add nine, because there's no seventh. We got the root, the third, the fifth, and the two. Um, so that's middle finger on the third fret of the A string, index finger on the second fret of the D string, open G, ring finger on the third fret of the B string. Um, and then the way that we're going to do that is, um, so I'm hammering my index finger onto uh, that second fret of the D string. So on our last cycle through, we're going to lift our index finger off because that's going to prepare us for that little flourish. And the flourish looks the same as it did when we did it over the G, so... Um, so that's just index finger going to the second fret of the G. Um, we got two plugs. And then on the third pluck, we hammer our pinky on to the fourth fret. Immediately after that, we're going to go to an A minor triad. So that's fifth fret of the low E, um, third fret of the A string, second fret of the D, second fret of the G. And that's with pinky, middle, index, index. So. Um, so we're going to play that A triad and then play the root again. And then we're moving on to, so that's just middle finger on the third fret of the B string, sliding up to the fifth fret of the B string, and then index finger on the second fret, sliding up to the fourth of the G string, and then back down to the second fret. So we're going to leave that index finger there, um, and we're going to add our pinky to the... Um, fourth fret of the B string. Now this is going to sound kind of gross. Until we change the chord, now we're moving on to a B. So I've got my index finger on the um, second fret of the A string, ring finger on the fourth fret of G, pinky on the fourth fret of B, and a high E, open. And in my picking hand, I'm just playing through that, and then coming back down. Now to end out this section, my index finger is going to go to the 2nd fret of the G string and slide up to the 4th fret. And then this kind of starts off the next section, so we have a low E, ring finger on the 6th fret of the D, index on the 4th fret of the G. Um, and then where we're going to go in the next section is it's basically just an E triad, so it'd be like with the third being the lowest fretted note. Technically, it's not an inversion because we still have the low E in the bass. Um, but you can think about it like an inversion if you're thinking about, you know, like these shapes. So this whole section, nice and slow. So before we dive too deep into this section, we're in the chord melody. This is definitely the most recognizable part of the song, um, but this is a chord melody. So I always think about the chords first. So if you can see the forest through the trees, if you can see that you're really just playing chord shapes, you get it. The melody is really just tying these chord shapes together. So a really good anchor point for you to learn is go through the chord progression. What are the chords? And then play the chord shapes that you're going to land on. If you can play those chord shapes kind of up to speed, 
then connecting them with the melody, like you've already done 90% of the work if you've gotten the chord shapes under your fingers. So a lot of people love Tab. I like Tab, it's a great tool. Um, but when I'm looking at chord melodies, I'm really looking at chord shapes. It might be different for you, but I think for me, when it comes to learning these types of arrangements, that has absolutely expediated my process. Let's dive into it. So we're starting off on the chord that we just landed on in the, in the first section. So we have a ring finger on the sixth fret of the D, index on the fourth fret of the G, and we're playing an open E. So we hit that, and then we hit the fifth fret of the B string with the middle. And then we take that whole shape, and we just shift it down a fret, and kind of reapproach it. So we're doing thumb. So there I'm doing my ring finger, I'm sliding down to the 4th fret, pulling off to my index finger on the 2nd fret, and that all happens on the G string. When I pull off to my index finger, I want to make sure my index finger is also being barred on the D, the G, and the B string, because we're going to go right into that A chord. Um, after we arpeggiate those notes, Uh, we're going to shift up, and we're essentially just playing an A triad minus the index finger, and we're going to go uh, D string, G string, E, D. So we're kind of doing it out of order. We, we're not going straight through, we're doing... Moving on, we're going to a B. Um, so this is kind of just like a B5. We've got root, octave, root, another root, because we're playing open B, so that's index on the 2nd fret of the A string, ring finger on the 4th fret of the D string, pinky on the 4th fret of the G, and an open B. So right after we strum that chord, we're going up to a B triad, and we're going to play a B over A, so we're playing an open A. This is going to create kind of some uh, walking motion in the bass. Um, so the way that I get up to that B triad is I just kind of put my index finger anywhere. You can put it wherever you want, and you're sliding up to um, the seventh fret of the B string, so. Um, and then we're just playing a B, like I said, a B triad, so ring finger on the ninth fret, middle finger on the eighth fret, index finger on the seventh fret of the D, G, and B string with an open A. So right after that B triad, we're going to go to uh, the 4th fret of the D string. Um, with our index finger, we're going to hammer on twice. Uh, hammer on, pull off. Hammer on again. And then we're going to arpeggiate a G sharp minor chord. So that's thumb on the 4th fret of the low E string. I got my ring finger on the 6th fret of the D string, index finger on the 4th fret of the G, index on the 4th fret of the B. Right after we do that, we're going to lay our middle finger down onto the 5th fret of the B string, and hammer, we're going to, we're, we're attacking both the G and the B strings, and then we're going to hammer our ring finger onto the 6th fret of the uh, G string. And then with another pluck, we're going to pull it back off. And then ring finger goes to the 6th fret of the D string. And we're going to slide it down to the 4th, pull off to the 2nd. So that whole exchange sounds like this. Now we're going to leave our index finger there, and that's going to set us up for this little C sharp minor 7 chord. Um, so that's ring finger on the 4th fret of the... Um, a string, index finger on the 2nd fret of the D string, pinky on the 4th fret of the G, open B. I'm just going to strum that once, or pluck it rather. And immediately after that we're going to lay our middle finger onto the 3rd fret of the B string, slide it up to the 5th fret, and make another C sharp minor. So this shape looks like index on the 4th of the A, ring on the 6th um, of the D, Index is barring the G on the 4th fret. We've got the middle on the 5th of the B string. So. Now 
we're gonna take our ring finger, move it to the G string, and we're gonna slide from the sixth fret to the fourth, and then we're gonna do um, open A. We're essentially making an A chord, but we're not gonna strum the B, we're just gonna strum the low A, second fret of the D, second fret of the G. Um, and now we're moving up to an A triad. Uh, we got the sixth that we're hammering onto, the sixth of the chord. So that's just ring finger on the seventh fret of the D, middle finger on the sixth fret of the G, index finger on the first fret of the, no, index finger on the fifth fret of the B, and we're hammering our pinky onto the seventh fret of that B. And then we're moving to a D major nine. So the way we're gonna get into that is by putting our index finger on the fourth fret of the D string, hammering onto the sixth fret of the D string with the ring finger. And then going back down to the fourth fret and then we make our shape. So that's middle on the five of the A, index on the four of the D, uh, pinky on the sixth of the G, ring finger on the fifth of the B. Now we're moving on to this crazy little lick. Um, so he's up here. So he's doing, um, he's got his index finger on the ninth fret of the D string, rings on the 11th of the G, open B, pinkies on the 11th of the E. Now when you attack that E, so we're gonna go, Pinky up to the 12, back down to the 11, pull off to the index on the 9, slide down to the 7. Now the rest of the lick, we're essentially just walking down um, a B triad, but we're going to add the 4 in. So the 4 of the chord we're going to add in. So we have, we just landed on that 7th fret of the E, now we got 7th of the B. Um, we're gonna go ninth, so this is the fourth of the chord. We're gonna go ninth of the G, down to eighth of the G with our middle finger. When we lay our ring finger down on this ninth of the, uh, of the D string, we don't wanna use the tip of our finger. We wanna use the flat part because we're gonna roll it to the ninth of the A. So, so far we have Finish it out, index on the seventh of the A, then index on the um, sixth of the A, middle grabs the seventh of the um, low E string. Now, I wouldn't practice just that lick. Because the hardest part of that lick is getting back to the E chord in the next section. So anytime you practice that lick, what I would recommend doing is... So we're, we're moving right back to that E shape that we started this section off. If you just practice that lick when you go to bridge the gap, you're probably gonna end up being a little too slow to get to that E. It's a really hard exchange. this whole section nice and slow. This section 
looks a lot like the last section. We're repeating the same kind of melody and chords. He just adds in other sections to kind of build up the energy. Um, so we're starting on that same E shape. Um, looks exactly like the last time we did it. And now we're gonna bring our ring finger up to the seventh fret of the D, pinky up to the seventh of the B. And we're gonna slide that shape up to the nine. And then we're gonna land on an A triad. Uh, so open A, ring finger on the seventh of the D, middle on the sixth of the G, index on the fifth of the B. So we're gonna strum the triad first, and then hit the low A. And then we're gonna do this little walking bass thing. So that's just open, two, four, open, two, four, two, four. And then after we hammer that ring finger on, we're gonna bring the index finger back to the second fret of the A string and pluck it simultaneously with the open B. So that whole thing sounds like this. And then moving back up, this will look very familiar. So everything I did there is exactly like the, the first section. When we get to this C sharp minor shape, we're gonna go to a G sharp minor and walk down to an F sharp minor. So that's middle finger on the um, fourth fret of the E string. My ring finger is barring the D and the G on the fourth fret. And I'm just plucking once, sliding down one fret. And then I'm gonna grab the second fret of the low E string with my thumb and the second fret of the D and G with my index. So that kind of looks exactly like, uh, you know, when we were here. We're just adding that little walk down. We're going to an F sharp minor rather than an A. Moving on, we have. So what he's doing there, um, he comes off of the. Uh, he brings his pinky off of the seventh fret of the B and he hammers his pinky onto the seventh fret, slides it up to the nine, then again up to the 10. And when he, when he does that initial slide up to the nine, he plucks the open D string. So we're going up to the nine, then up to the 10, and then we lay our index finger down on the E, B, and G string on the seventh fret, so. So once we get up to the 10th fret, we're gonna lift our pinky off and we're, we already have our index finger barred there. Uh, one more time. We're gonna end this section with a B sus four going to a B major. D sus4, we've got our index finger on the 7th fret of the E string, we've got our ring finger on the 9th fret of the D, pinky on the 9 of the G, and then open B and E. And we're just playing all of those strings right in order, and then we're going to lift our pinky off, move it to our middle finger on the 8th fret of the G string, so that'll sound like this. So when I strum that, I'm trying to lay my index finger on that A string so the A string doesn't play through and you're hitting every other string with your thumb. So this whole section, nice and slow.
going to start this section off with a little ASUS2. Um, just strum through it. So we're playing it fast. And then slow. Then we're just going to lift our ring finger off, move our middle finger to the eighth fret of the G string. I'm not super concerned about labeling this chord because it only happens for a little bit. Now we're moving to a G sharp minor. So index finger on the sixth fret of the D string, ring finger on the eighth fret of the G string, open B, middle on the ninth fret of the E string. So that whole thing. And then we're gonna go. So then ring finger goes to the 12th fret of the G string and then slides down to the 11th and pulls off to the index finger on the nine. And then thumb just comes over to grab that C sharp, that nine, uh, ninth fret of the E string. And then we have, so we've got ring finger on the seventh fret of the D string, pinky on the seventh fret of the B. From the seven up to the nine, that's where we're gonna slide. And then we've got a little F sharp minor. F sharp minor seven, so um, ninth fret of the A string, eleventh fret of the D, nine of the G, um, ten of the B. Hammer your pinky onto the twelve of the B, and then pluck the high E, um, which is that index finger is barring that ninth fret all the way through. So. Then we move to an A triad, but we're gonna play it with a low E. So, A triad, hammer on to the uh, sixth of the chord, so grab your pinky onto that seventh fret of the B string. Slide it up to the eighth fret, back down to the seventh and pull it off. And then we're gonna do low A. We're kinda keeping that A triad there, but we're gonna lift our index finger off, play the low A, D, uh, and G. So we're gonna play A, D, G, and then we're gonna play E, D. Take that shape, slide it up. Uh, just two frets, do the same exact thing. Now take that shape and slide it up one more fret. So now, after we slide it up a fret, we're gonna add our pinky to the 11th fret of the B string and our index to the seventh fret. Next, we're moving on to an A over B. And we're doing that same thing with the pinky. Uh, the only difference is now we have the A triad, but we're grabbing the B, so the seventh fret of the low E string with our thumb. And then we hammer the pinky on, slide it up one fret, back down one fret, pull off to the index finger. Now this next shape is a stretch. Um, so the way that I would recommend getting to it, first I'll talk about what it is. So we've got the low E middle finger on the uh, second fret of the A. We've got our ring finger on the fourth fret of the, um, the D string. Index is on the first fret of the G and pinky is on the uh, um, fourth fret of the B string. So that's, I mean, this right here is a stretch. To do a two, or to do like a two fret stretch with your middle finger and your ring finger is not easy. What I'd recommend is when you're coming off of this A over B, slide your ring finger down and as you're sliding it down, you're almost laying it over, if that makes sense. Yeah, that shape's uncomfortable. The only, I, I can't just put my hand, well, it's kind of hard to just put your hand on it. You really have to like put your ring finger down first and then lay that over and kind of use that ring finger as an anchor. So we're gonna finish off with this shape. It's like a cool E sus too. Um, we've got open E, ring finger on the 11th fret of the um, A string, index finger on the nine of the D, 
pinky on the 11th of the G and everything else is open and we just strum from the high string down to the low string. So this whole section nice and slow. If you need a little more help, be sure to check out my website as I do offer online lessons over Zoom. So um, we can definitely hook something up and I can help you with any problem spots. Or if you have questions about guitar related theory, I can hopefully answer some of those for you. If you found this video to be helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And um, if you're interested in more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for sticking around.